Hey, lovely creative weirdos. So we're going to dive into another story structure breakdown of the film Fight Club. Another favorite of mine and hopefully yours as well. Spoiler alert. There's going to be a lot of spoilers. I'm going through the whole film. Not every single detail, but the main structure. At the same time, stay to the end of the film to find out how to win this free ebook. It helps you in every aspect of plotting your story. It's very simple, very guided, and everything's that. There's other versions of the book, and you can check out on our website. But stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how to win. We're going to give out one every week. All right, let's dive into Fight Club. So as always, before diving into this breakdown, I like to talk about theme, which is always important. It governs a lot of things. It's usually the question you're asking or the question you're exploring through your story. And in this case, there's the main theme and then there's little sub themes that you explore through different characters and things like that. And in this case, the themes are consumerism and anti-consumerism, identity and self-discovery, chaos versus order, masculinity and vulnerability, violence and spiritual awakening, isolation and lack of father figures, which is very obvious in this film and kind of like a Zen Buddhism kind of thing going on. But it's it's all over the place, but it's well done, honestly, when they bring it together. So let's dive into this. So in the film, it really doesn't give the main character, Ed Norton's character, a name. It's the narrator, but it's Ed Norton. So in Act 1, you introduce everything, the hero in their everyday journey, in their everyday life. So the narrator, Ed Norton, is introduced as a delusioned, insomniatic office worker. He's obviously dissatisfied with his consumer-driven life and suffers from lack of identity and purpose. Hence the whole beginning of buying IKEA furniture and things like that. He just, you know, cookie cutter things. There's no real identity and there's no real purpose. He's just consuming and consuming. So the narrator at Norton attends a support group for various afflictions as a way to cope with his insomnia and emotional emptiness. He's trapped in a materialistic lifestyle, as we see with the IKEA. You know, and the whole catalog thing is amazing. I love it. So it's very consumer and corporate and things like that. It's very reminiscent of the 90s and the early 2000s and even worse now, honestly. But people are kind of coming back to more, more, you know, substance. At least that's my opinion. So in the inciting incident, obviously the 10% or 10th page or 15th page within that range of 10 to 15% or page. In this case, it's a film. It's usually page or 15. We'll dive into the script in another episode. So the inciting incident disrupts the hero's life, Red Norton. So he meets Tyler Durton on a business trip on the plane. So the narrator meets Tyler Durton, a charismatic soap salesman with an anarchist philosophy. Tyler represents everything the narrator wishes to be, a free-spirited, rebellious, and confident. It's perfect, honestly. After that, the hero enters a new situation, meeting new people. So in this section, it's usually, once you have the inciting incident, it reflects and you allow the story to grow a little bit to show this new world after this new situation, which is the inciting incident. So after the narrator's apartment is mysteriously <laughs> destroyed, or blew, it blew up, the apartment blew up. He randomly calls Tyler and together they start a fight club. They first meet at the bar and then they just, you know, start kicking it. And obviously since the narrator has nowhere to go, you know, they just start doing this thing in the parking lot, which looks weird, honestly. So they start this underground group where men gather to fight as a release for their frustrations and to reclaim their masculinity, part of the theme. The narrator embraces Tyler's philosophies and the liberating experience of the club. So it's it's very freeing for him. It's, it is kind of the theme where these guys have no father figures and they have nowhere to go. It's like, sadly, community centers are perfect for that. Or boys and girls club in, you know, in the Western, like Canada, the US, where they don't have parents or they, if they do, they're not there. So they need places to go. And this is like the, the, that example. So when you move into the next turning point, they have to formulate a goal. So the fight club evolves into something more dangerous. Tyler's influence over the narrator deepens and fight club begins to expand across the country. It's just growing. Tyler starts project mayhem. <laughs> it's crazy. The violent movement aimed at dismantling societal norms, consumerism, which is how the character was living prior, corporate structures, 
the narrator starts losing control of his life and his identity because it's merging because spoiler alert you already know the rest if you've seen this movie it's old it's since 1999 he is tyler durden but let's just move on because this is just about story structure anyway so once they formulated that goal they as in tyler the narrator are the same they're one he formulates that goal we move into act two as always so with this new goal and plan, the protagonist struggles to let go of their old life and overcome mounting obstacles. So they're in and out. They're committed in certain ways, but they're kind of looking back. So Project Mayhem escalates and Project Mayhem becomes increasingly anarchistic and dangerous. The narrator grows uncomfortable with its violence and destructive acts. He starts questioning Tyler's motives and the ethics of the group's operations. However, Tyler's grip on him and the other members intensifies because he is Tyler. So once you move in, this is the point of no return, the midpoint of the film. Usually a lot of like typical B-movies would have, this is not a B-movie, but it would usually have the characters have sex. They open up emotionally and things like that. And they're like, you know what? This is amazing. This new whatever's happened to me is amazing. I'm committing to this whole thing completely. I am in. It's where you set up you know, disaster. But so in the midpoint, the protagonist makes his commitment to their goal. And in this case, Tyler, the narrator, Tyler disappears. The narrator realizes Tyler has gone off the grid, taking Project Mayhem to more extreme lengths. You're Tyler. The narrator begins to see the negative consequences of the group's actions and feels the weight of what's happening around him. He can no longer stop the chaos that Tyler has unleashed, aka him the other aspect of himself that was longing to do this. So it's it's all about, it's the internal struggle of a hero's journey. Like they want something, so they manifest this being, which is themselves, is kind of sadly schizophrenic aspects, or there's other terms for this, medical terms, but this character that he's built with inside himself, but seen to us as this character that is external. It's beautiful, honestly. So when we move into that, he's he's committed or tyler's committed so in this case there's no other person it's him he's tyler either way he's committed so complications and higher stakes as the character pursues their new goal returning home becomes impossible you know so revelation of the truth the narrator discovers that tyler is not this obviously he's not separate he's a manifestation as i said before of his own personality he created tyler as a coping mechanism to escape his dissatisfaction with his life the narrator now understands, aka Ed, Ed Norton, now understands that he himself is responsible for everything Tyler has done. Obviously, the projects, the craziness, you know, this whole alter ego. And it's it's a beautiful revelation. But obviously, all hope is going to be lost. As always, a devastating event crushes the hero's hope, causing emotional devastation, the loss of control. The narrator is horrified by the realization that he is Tyler, you know. Project Mayhem's plan to destroy the financial institutions is already in motion. The narrator feels powerless to stop it. His mental and emotional state, you know, it all deteriorates. He goes downhill because like, what the hell is this? What am I? Who am I? I'm Tyler, but what the hell? So it's this internal struggle. He struggles to regain control of his mind and his actions, obviously. So from there, it's like this kind of all hope is lost. What can I do? I can't do this. I can't go back. I want to go back, but I can't go back. So in the third act, the final push, the hero retreats to their old identity and gives up feeling unfulfilled and defeated, but they must make this last do or die attempt. So in this case, he's like, he is me. I can't find him. He shows up when he wants to. What the hell am I going to do? I got to do something. I can't go back as much as I want to, you know, put this genie back in the bottle type of thing. But the narrator desperately tries to stop the final stage of the of project mayhem so the narrator desperately tries to stop this whole project he tracks down the members of the project and confronts them but they are fully devoted to tyler's vision and refuse to listen to him because it's like he told them if i say this don't believe me if it's especially against the plan meaning if i'm sabotaging aka tyler if i'm sabotaging it don't believe me which is the most fucked up thing honestly beautifully done honestly so the climax, the hero embraces their true self, confronting the final challenge or villain resolves the central conflict. And in this case, he is confronting himself. So the confrontation with Tyler in the final confrontation, the narrator shoots himself in an attempt to symbolically kill Tyler and regain control. The psychological struggle 
culminates with Tyler disappearing and the narrator surviving, having seamlessly defeating Tyler. The thing is, it's like a physical jolt. It's like getting you out of your, your state. There's many ways to view that, but he resolved that aspect. But as you know, the film, he didn't resolve what Project Mayhem was going to do anyway, because you can't always fix everything. And this is what makes this film so beautiful. You can't fix everything. There's things that were in motion beyond him. So he has to fix the things that he is in control of, which is creating Tyler and stopping Tyler. So he stops himself to the point of almost killing himself. Even though I didn't get into the love interest, it's that's its own thing. But these breakdowns are usually for the simplicity of the structure. And you can fill in the gaps with these other aspects of story A, story B, the love interest, all these other aspects that do fill into this. But in this case, this is just to give you an example of how to use these tools and how to structure the overall story. Because in this case, you would have put the female leads in different spots to fill in the right themes and the right character arcs and et cetera, et cetera. So in the resolution, everything is not tidy, which this is why I love the movie. I love so many movies that are very similar that don't dust their hands off and say, everybody wins happily ever after. It doesn't feel fulfilling, honestly. So the resolution ties up loose ends, showing the hero fully embracing their new identity and achieving a sense of fulfillment or peace. When it seems, when it says fulfillment and peace, it doesn't mean the world is at peace. And in this case, it's Tyler is more at peace. So the narrator regains control of his mind and body through the destruction caused by Project Mayhem, which obviously cannot be undone as the buildings explode around them. He holds uh, Marla's hand, obviously his love interest. I didn't get into that, but that's a story A, story B type, you know, story C type thing going on. It is a major part, you know, it drives him in a certain way. And it also has a conflict between Tyler and, and himself. The film ends on a note of ambiguity, which is amazing. The narrator having embraced a new vision of himself, but at the cost of this crazy destruction. It's it's pretty, pretty beautiful. I warned you about the spoilers, but you're here. So let's dive into the giveaway. So as always, coming back full circle to win this ebook in the comments down below, put the title Fight Club, and I will pick one person every week. And in this case, for this week, it's Fight Club. So put Fight Club in the comments down below and I will pick one person and I will email you this beautiful, amazing tool, the story planner. And there's three other versions with each their different benefits. So check out our website. Also, don't forget, we do script consulting. We do revisions and everything like that. Contact us. We'll help you with your stories and every other aspect we can from filmmaking, advising, you name it. Let us know in the comments below and email us on the website and we'll get back to you. Till next time, peace weirdos.